tell me about how you how Black Voters Matter is going into this midterms. I mean, it's we're well into the cycle, obviously, um, but headed into November. What states are you working the most in? Where do you see what are you excited by? And then on the flip side, what scares you and frightens you um, mm. come, going into November? That's a huge question. But, it is. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I, I think I want to start with the reverse if I can. If I can stay, sure. can stay with, you know, what frightens me about um, going into the midterms election is that we have we're in a political era, the wild, wild west for one party that that a, the Republican Party is not even pretending to have any semblance of anything that is just or democratic. They have basically yeah, yeah. like we're going to go for broke. Right. Mm -hmm. If if white men with money don't have power, then the hell with all of it. Right. right? And so <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's what's very scary is I feel like we are not we people are not. in. let me say this. I recently. I recently went to Israel, Palestine a, a few weeks ago oh, wow. and I was at the um, at the museum and at the museum. What I didn't know is I didn't realize. And I've read the story of, of uh, I, I'm familiar with the history of the, the Holocaust, read many, many books on it. For some reason, it completely escaped me that Hitler had given every person a car that I knew that, that I knew that he had given them some information um, and I knew that he had given, well, uh, uh, um, on the Germans, um, he had given a radio, right? Mm -hmm. I, but he had actually given every family a Volkswagen. I didn't know that, mm -hmm. right? And after that, he literally was able to lead a country to hell, <laughs> essentially, right. right? And lead to mm -hmm. the murder of millions of, of innocent people. And I And a country that for the most part, uh, had lived, had been diverse, right? People were living in neighborhoods and right. living among each other. All of a sudden, oh, almost like it seemed like it was overnight, just turned on an entire group of people who had been mm. their doctors, their lawyers, their neighbors, their teachers, their 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 daycare workers, and that led to that. I, I'm, I'm raising that because I think in the U.S. we take for granted of the fragility of this democracy and how dangerous yeah. that that hateful propaganda mm -hmm. can be that when you have some when you've got propaganda that is actually attacking the gay community that is attacking women that is attacking um attack attacking poor people we have to really recognize the extreme danger and the one thing that kind of keeps me up at night is this i think this lack of seriousness that we have, we're still dealing with it. Like we're still dealing with this political landscape. Like we're just dealing with two parties that have ideological differences. Right. Right. right? And that's extremely dangerous to me that we yeah. should be really dealing with that. There is a rogue party that has, yeah. that does not have any value system or commitment to pr preserving and upholding democracy. And yeah. it should be dismantled and held yeah. accountable. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a lesson. I mean, you're talking about basically a lesson in smart fascism, which is if you meet right. people's basic needs or at least attempt to, even if it's like a one off, even if it is like we're saying, signing your name on the check, which is the smartest thing Donald Trump did under the pandemic, even as, you know, hundreds of thousands of people were dying. Um, mm. It was a good move. Um, mm. And and so if only I mean, not if only, but like, thank God he wasn't a smarter like fascist. <laughs> DeSantis, um, you mean? <laughs> yeah, or a DeSantis. Who yes, because that's essentially who DeSantis is. Yeah, I he's scary. Like, I don't know. I don't think I'm. I'm just not a believer in DeSantis. I think he can't speak. He doesn't know oh, how. No, to, like, I actually talk. think that he. I no, I actually believe that's a, a front. Just you think like so? I, oh, absolutely. He's dumbing it just, down. Even, he's dumbing it down. I. I actually think. I think he's um smart. I think he's evil. Me too. But I think he's yep. smart. Um, Me too. I think that. I mean, even Trump. When is Tr let's let's say pre-Trump running into going to office? Yeah. When when did people in Alabama start liking uh, <laughs> folks from New York? Never. I don't never. Don't like James, you from Kentucky? I don't. You it never know makes what they sense. Think about Yankees. What they oh, call yeah. <laughs> I know. Don't think about me. You Moving understand. away. You understand, <laughs> and Trump is was the quintessential New yeah. Yorker. Like he he might as right. well have had New York on his forehead, mm -hmm. right? Right. But all of a sudden, he wasn't he wasn't reflective of a personality New Yorker. 
all of a right. sudden he was making gaffes. He was like creating, he was, he wasn't even smart enough to answer a question. I believe that was actually not that I think that he's smart because I don't think that he's smart, but I do think that he's clever. And yeah. I think that he was able to exploit right this idea of I'm just dumb and, they're, and I'm the average person and I'm the 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 yeah. the, the Joe that can't read and he's I good at scale. TV. He's good at TV. I think he's put on yeah. performance. I'm raising that because I see that strategy is continuing. DeSantis, if you go back, now he, I never thought he was a strong debater because I, quite frankly, in his own gubernatorial race with, with, um, with Andrew Gillum, mm -hmm. he ate him up like he sold something, right? So he's not a mm -hmm. debater, right? No. But, but, but I'm watching him speak now and it is very, very, problematic it is very if yeah. you look at it it is almost a copycat version of trump yeah it's all grievance and attack it's all grievance oh, it's all sure. attack. even his cadence has changed now all mm -hmm. of a sudden he's stumbling over words it is all <laughs> an act. right 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 he's doing the how do you say cucumber uh line right. Sorry, right. Um, right. The the Hilaria Baldwin. But I want to ask uh, Latasha, what are what are the states like? I mean, obviously there's Georgia, which is huge, you know, in terms of maintaining the Senate, and and just what a big fu 2020 was to the Republican Party, and 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 also what a testament to grassroots organizing that I know yeah. your your organization had a huge role in as well. Um, which states are you looking at? Which states okay. sort of you know are are you all zeroed in on? You did ask me this, Francesca, and I went all <laughs> around the world and back. Um, You're your fine. Piece, so we're gonna keep. We're gonna get back to it. You know, part <laughs> of what wh where there's a Senate race, that's where we are because we believe that this last experience of, um, uh, particularly the key states where 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 there's a possibility in the swing states. What we are concerned about is like this last cycle. You know, to to not be able to get voting rights passed, not to get a criminal justice reform that we think one of the most critical races um, would be turned out and where those Senate, those key Senate races um, in Georgia, in Pennsylvania, um, mm -hmm. like in Arizona, like we need place, not Arizona, um, um, uh, Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. Um, And and so. I, I'm I'm raising that because I think that, I mean that's part of that's part of what's going to drive a lot of the energy of the work where the races are happening. But we'll also be in the South that we believe that the South has been a stronghold for backwards conservatism for much too long, and yeah. so we're going to be in all of the states in the South as our base, which is our base, and that goes the way we define the South is this from um, South uh, North Carolina all the way down over to Texas, up to uh, West Virginia, Arkansas, all those states. So that's where mm -hmm. we're, we'll be working. Um, in some of those races, we're working in gubernatorial races. There are some races of some states that have gubernatorial elections. Some states have a Senate race happening. Some states have a lo have some local races that we think are key and critical. And yeah. so for us, we're not an organization that's just focusing on the electoral process. We're looking at power. What is the interventions to help communities have power? And some of the things that we're doing our model is that we are a capacity building organization and mm -hmm. so what we do is we find groups grassroots organizations um in different states a, a, a prime example would be georgia like in georgia we're working with over 50 organizations that are, are located throughout georgia we resource them we support um we we uh, support them as a thought leader i mean a thought partner around projects we gird them up and we work in, and so we work almost like like if, if, if a candidate had a coordinated campaign we're a social justice focused coordinated right. campaign where we're where where we're lifting up that work and so we what we think that is going to be really critical is that people are already in a space that they're paying attention the question is, can we excite and ignite them? Can we mm -hmm. actually move them to action? And so we, we've been working on nonstop. So part of what we believe is one of the, the critical mistakes that usually um, the Democratic Party makes is that it's, it's and candidates, is that the activity is only around his election, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's the, you know, um, for the black community, I often say it's the round the Negro up period, that three weeks before the election, you just round them up and take them out and tell them to go vote, right? Which is just mm -hmm. so disrespectful on all kinds of levels. Yeah. Right? So what we were like, no, what we're going to do is we're being intentional about being building people power, about yeah. building black power. And the way that we do that 
as we work 365 days out of a year. And so that we've got infrastructure, we have an ecosystem of groups that can respond and to help yeah. get the word out and mobilize people. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.